Hello everybody and welcome back to So Sick Airways, the only way to fly. And we've got a special video for you, for you guys today because we're going to be flying in the brand new Runs S6S Tail Dragger, the Coyote 2 by Flyboy Sim. All right, let's get into it. Okay, cool. So yes, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're going to be, um, ooh, what's that? We're going to be doing a pretty awesome tour today. We're going to be doing a grand old tour, a bonus Scotland. Let's just uh, zoom in on Scotland here. Well, as you can see, it's currently under lots of cloud cover. Ooh, don't worry about that though. We'll just do, uh, you know, an old thing. So yeah, some more bush flying, but this time in the Coyote Two. It should be interesting. Now, I want to do a nice comparison between the kit box and the Coyote 2. The Coyote 2 uses more steam gauges than the kit box. I know that much. Um, it's a bit more of a technical aircraft than the kit box itself. Um, and I believe it's actually the Coyote 2 is flown by Trent Palmer's brother, um, who I believe you actually have his. Um, you do actually have his livery on here. Let's have a look. Where is it? There it is. Chris Palmer. Isn't that cool? Yeah, pretty sick. So yeah, so the uh, yeah, so Flyboy Simulations has released their well, they've released their first aircraft. This the S six S Tail Dragger Coyote two. Um, it's pretty cool. So yeah, pretty cool indeed. Uh, it's the first one they've ever done for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it's the one that they. It's definitely one we haven't seen before. It's a very popular light sport aircraft, and promises to be an interesting new addition to the light sport aircraft category in the sim. So the RANS S6S Kaiju 2 is a single engine, two seat, high wing aircraft manufactured by RANS Designs. It has a long history of success and popularity among aviation enthusiasts, thanks to part to the versatile design and the impressive performance capabilities. The S6S variant featured in this release is powered by the Rotax 912 ULS engine, delivering 100 horsepower providing ample power for even the most challenging flying conditions a light sports aircraft may encounter. The RANS S6S Coyote 2 from Flyboy Simulations comes with two different variants, Trike and Tail Dragger. Today we're going to be using the Tail Dragger, as well as seven authentic liveries. A paint kit is included and our users to customize the aircraft appearance to their liking. Isn't that nice? So yeah, so we'll, have to, we'll, go, we'll go over a bit more detail once we get into the uh, the sim itself. So at the moment, yep, we're going to be doing Scotland. Um, I have actually downloaded the Iron Sim Scotland Historical Landmarks um, pack, which includes 16 custom-made landmarks, including Dawn Castle, South Portland Street Suspension Bridge, the Kirkfield Bank Old Bridge, the Orc... Orchardton Tower and St. John's Kirk Church, to name but a few. Um, what we've also done is we've gone to Orbix, the Orbix website, and we've downloaded the British Isles Mesh by the indie developer Dimitro Cry Tunufu. Uh, marks the sixth instalment of a, in their series of terrain enhancements following the success of the Iceland, the North Atlantic Alaska, the Himalayan, and the Central Asian and South Asia Mesh. Um, an in-depth analysis of the existing default elevation data across the entire coverage area has guided the development of this add-on. Additional high-resolution data was integrated to fill low-resolution areas by default terrain mesh and correct spikes, troughs along DEM grid sections. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so the British Isles Mesh is a fully contained product and no changes made to the default mesh of any other files with virtually no notable performance impact. Each LOD is consistent without any blurring and minimal LOD morphing. Okay, cool. Key features. A variety of DEM data, including digital terrain models, have been processed. Low resolution areas in the current Microsoft Flight Simulator terrain mesh have been filled. Gaps were filled with airborne LiDAR data and 2mm resolution in Ireland and 1mm resolution elsewhere. Mountainous upland ranges also have received high quality DMN data. Spikes and other visual issues along tile boundaries have been reduced. 
uh, raster data were compiled into CGL format to prevent conflict with the default coastline vector data. The combined source data were processed to minimum LOD pop-in, fully self-contained product with a minimum performance impact, compatible with other Orbix Great British products and Microsoft Flight Simulator world updates. Okay, well, if you understood any of that, you are clearly more intelligent than I am. So, let's get our flight plan sorted. So, as you may have noticed, there's a big old clump of stuff over here for us to have a go have a look at. So, if we zoom in. Now, we could fly around here and get a, take in the sights here. This could be quite nice. We've just got Ben Nevis there. Um, Lock Levin. Yep, we've got a few other bits and bobs. That's pretty cool. Uh, hmm. We could do that. That could actually probably be perfect for us, in fact. We need to find an airstrip. Is that an airstrip? Yes, it is. Hooray. Okay, so what airstrip is this? Fort Augustus airstrip. Cool. Um, there's no parking by the looks of things, so it looks like we'll be taken off from the runway. So we'll set our departure from there. Okie dokie. And what we'll do is we'll fly southwest down here to Lock Lock. Locky, <laughs> only in Scotland, eh? and then we're looking for another airfield somewhere down here. Let's go, let's skip across because we don't want to be, we don't want it to be a short flight, we want it to be a long flight, don't we? We could go down to Glasgow. Hmm, should we go down to Glasgow? Let's see how far away that is. Set that as a rival, it's an hour and 17. Okay, that seems good. So we'll do that. So we'll do go there. We'll then go to here, 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 I think this is going to be a pretty cool flight to be honest. Yep, definitely going to check out Ben Nevis, the biggest, tallest mountain in Great Britain. Okay, so that's a bit of a round the houses kind of thing going on there. Um, there's another airstrip there. Let's actually, I'd like us to fly down here. Uh, hmm. In fact, let's just remove that one. Let's put one here. And then we'll put one here because we want it to fly. We're going to fly down this bit. Taking this beautiful island just off off there. Now these islands here are uh, pretty stunning. If you've ever been to Scotland, you know exactly what I'm on about. They are something else. Uh, yeah, let's go over this. Go over this runway. Add that. Um, Glenmore. Let's go to Glenmore. Into Ford. And then what we want to do Let's fly up from Ford, up to here, to there, and then we go across to Glasgow there. Okay, let's see what we're looking at. Two hour flight. Okay, yeah, I think we could do that. Why the hell not? Cool, let's rock and roll. Okay, hello. This looks rather nice, doesn't it? Cool. <laughs> Look at that. Someone's plane. Sweet. Oh yeah. Coyote 2. Brands a success. Okay, good. The engine stops. That's exactly what I wanted to happen, which is great. Let's turn off all our avionics as well. Turn off all our landing lights. Make sure everything is off. Okay, so good no co-pilot either turn them turn them off earlier on I like that detail there that's cool the coyote bit there that's really cool okay let's have a little look around the aircraft then shall we so let's go outside I'm gonna turn off my head track in a second so we can just have a proper look so yeah the external and apparently the internal models feature high definition textures while the 3D model animations are said to be accurate and realistic, the flight model is also based on real data as well. Okay, uh, the fully interactive virtual cockpit includes a functional checklist, 
sun shades and even a GoPro camera. It's powered by a combination of steam gauges and Microsoft Flight Simulator Aero Avionics. Okay, cool. One of the key features of the RAND's S6X Coyote 2 is the exceptional short takeoff and landing characteristics. This makes it an ideal choice of pilot to enjoy exploring off the beaten path destinations and landed in remote, challenging environments. Well, hello, that's me. So cool. The aircraft's compact size and excellent removability makes it well suited for navigating tight spaces and narrow airstrips. Nice. Flyboy Simulations noticed a gap in the current add-on offering in Microsoft Flight Simulator with no RANS aircraft available for enthusiasts of the brand. They aim to challenge that and offer RANS flyers a decent choice in the simulator. Flyboy decided to tackle this project and create a detailed rendition of the aircraft. And yeah, so far, so good. Looks lovely, especially in this green livery. It's very classic, very classic livery. Hmm. Really cool. Okay, let's jump back in the aircraft. Okie dokie, right, let's get the ball rolling. So, uh, no idea what that noise is. I imagine that's probably the um, the rudders. My rudder pedals going nuts. Oh no, that's the rudder pedals. Uh, what is that noise? Bit of wind, perhaps? I don't know. Who knows? Um, cool, so they mentioned about an, a, um, a checklist. Let's see what that is. Oh, there it is down there. You just grab that. Okay, and let's zoom in and have a look. So, pre flight inspection, pre flight checks done. Let's see what's fastened. Brakes have applied. Brakes are on, yep. Uh, circuit breakers are all in. Looks like it to me. Yep. Radios are off. Yep, radios off. Uh, cockpit lighting check. There's the cockpit lighting. Is that it? What do I doing that for? Seems interesting, doesn't it? <coughs> okay, all switches are off. Valve, fuel valve is on. Okay, the fuel valve is here. That's on. Yep. Fuel valve is on. Master battery is on. Okay, master battery on. Cool. Now just start. Brakes, apply brakes. Yep, brakes are applied. Throttle set. Set throttle to that there, yep. Cool. Throttle set. Um, Pellet area is cleared. Yes, it is. Okay, starter engage. Yeah. As you can see our steam gauge is powering up, which is good to see. Flight plan, cool, flight plan's in there, let's go to the map. Sweet, let's zoom out, let's just check this. Looks good to me. Cool. Uh, right, we want to have the autopilot feature enabled. So let's now have gear just here. Cool, so we can use autopilot if we need to. Well, I need to. I might just go for a free flight, really. Well, two hours is a long time. Uh, okay, uh, bottom adjust. do anything, cut off do anything, nope, okay, <coughs> oil pressure, looks good, yep, nothing looks good there, coolant looks good, bolts look good, let's just check our fuel, great, we've got a giant bar in the way, so what we'll do here is just get weights and measures, Cool. Full fuel. 
So unlike the um, unlike the kit box, our flaps and our ailerons are separate. There's on a kit box, they're all one great big flap. Interesting. Okay, so we just take the boots off. It's a thing with uh, flying in my home cockpit. I've got uh, ugh, my pedals are really rubbish with boots. The, um, the flaps up. The aircraft is kind of coming to its own a little bit. Let's just give ourselves a bit of extra speed. What's up to our GPS? Just Sure, maybe. 
the other side. Always switches are on. Starts is still on. Um, I don't know why that's happening. Looks like there might be a bit of a bug. Okay, we'll turn it off for the time being. Oh, cool. That's cool. Is this an apple? Uh, no idea, that's an apple. It's pretty sweet. Check that out there. Right. Now. Okay, so we've got no map. Great. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get the BFR map up from here. There we go. Okay, so I'll pop that out and I'll stick it in my other screen so we can follow that instead. We don't need to worry about it. That is what we're going to do. As soon as the GPS is working, we're just going to put it on top of here, like this. Um, is that distracting? I think it is distracting. Let's turn ourselves around anyway. Yeah, it's distracting. Let's just put it on top of it. Good. We look pretty good, I think. So that's outside view. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. And the avionics are still working. Great. You'll have to send a support ticket if that happens again because um, I definitely didn't do anything wrong. I didn't press anything. To my knowledge, anyway. Who knows, eh? Full throttle. Let's get up over this hill. I did used to fly in VR, but um, I find that VR hurts my head. The back of my head hurts my back of the head feels really strange when I do it. It's probably because I've thrown myself about a bit in the aircraft, but just like the station we do, just sort of sat there doing nothing else. Full on go for it. As I'm sure you all know if you're familiar with the channel. Nice sounds this aircraft, isn't it? Let's go back outside because I think it sounds particularly good outside. Oh, I love it. That was a lot down there, look. Yep, that's where we're headed. So let's head in that direction. Whenever I see forests like this, I always wonder like, what's, what's inside those forests. Because we're so remote right now. What's going on down there? Scotland doesn't have any bears, apparently. There's no bears in Scotland, and yet, look at it. It's clearly bear country. So yeah, it totally is. It totally is bear country. And all we're going to do is we're just going to sweep ourselves down here and have a little look at this structure just over here a second. So I'm going to check it out. Okay, we're going a bit fast now. We don't want to stress the aircraft. Let's tar calm that down a bit. Okay, so it looks like there was like a dam here or something. Oh, it's a bridge. Sweet. Shut those trees. 
Well. Yeah, it's definitely less less forgiving than the kit box. The kit box I feel is a little bit more forgiving. Plus as well, if you're going to overstress the aircraft, it will tell you because it will start beeping like mad at you. Whereas this one doesn't beep, it just goes, it shuts down the simulator, which is very, very annoying and frustrating. So yeah, Scotland doesn't have any bears. Is there any bears? They got reintroduced wolves, I know that much a while ago, but um, how much of that is uh, true or not, I don't know. The gray, I know the grey wolf got reintroduced to Scotland. Something down. Bizarre thing there. Okay, um, our trim seems to be all over the place here. Let's try and trim ourselves off. Come on. That's better. It's a landmark yet, have we? But uh, he's complaining, right? Just look at this countryside. Wow. And imagine having this in the doorstep. Incredible. I remember my uh, partner and I during the pandemic, and there was that, that free um, time in August when everyone could go out and do stuff. We went on a little trip to Scotland and we stayed in Stirling, in Stirling Castle. Good shit. Itself. We went to Loch Lomond. And as we went there, it was another summer, it's August, and uh, we were there about sort of like early evening, and there were folk just bathing in the loch and having a laugh like families and stuff. That's what I think it was like, oh They got the perfect life. Is that the perfect life? It seemed like it to me at the time, anyway. Quite dangerously low here, aren't we? But hey ho, that's what we do. Give ourselves a bit of extra prop there because uh, burning around a bit, we're not really. Swizz it round. Woo! Oh yeah. Look at these trees. Do you know where that comes from? Yes. I think. Might make, might sound so familiar to you if you're a Star Wars fan. Let's get down here in between these trees. Oh yeah, look at this. Here we go. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Now this is bush flying. Yo! Alright. So I'm going to go over the edge here, look some kind of edge. Is it a natural edge? Probably not. Let's see, shall we? No, it's not a natural edge, but it's an edge nonetheless. I've been paying very little uh, to the uh, to the sat nav, but um, it seems to be going the right direction, so that's good. I know I keep calling it a sat nav, and I'll probably get told off. I should be calling it a These mountains here, though. Oh, stunning. This is a great big lock if ever I saw one. Christ almighty. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Just expecting like, a giant sea monster just to come out of there and just like rah, grab the plane and like, pull a stand over. Oh no, I'm going to like, go to battle and stuff. Although I didn't do too much. Just throw a bit of blade at it. Give it some uh, civil aviation laws and bore it to death. That was right. Okay, what altitude are we at? Uh, we are at about 400 feet, 500 feet, and 300 feet. Let's be turning over to the right here. There's some kind of point of interest. I think that's obviously the lock itself. Let's zoom in on the uh, set now. This is lock locky. It's nice, isn't it? I check this out. In real life. You're like, I've burned my airplane, remember this? My uh, partner would be like, uh huh, yep, 
whatever up. Like a, a stink it in, stink it in. Don't care how great it is. Because it is great. Alright, full speed ahead. Let's get up these mountains. Woo! Okay, we're well, about uh, five degree bank angle. Okay. This is definitely a manoeuvre in aviation that you would never do. Because the air pressure between those mountains would literally pull your aircraft between them and yank you down onto the ground. Have you ever seen the film Alive or Society of the Snow on Netflix at the moment? Yeah, that's, what's, that's what happens to you. You get yanked right down. I'm going to go over this bridge. I'm also on the other side. I wonder what is on the other side. Now, I bet so many explorers when we used to fly these sorts of mountains, that was like, they'd be like, what the hell is on the other side of that? But my airspeed's dropping seriously here. Seriously dropping here. Seriously dropping. We're probably not going to make it over this. No, we're not. We're not going to make it over. Right, now, turn around. Oh, let's not crash. So yeah, so I did try to uh, just fly over that massive mountain and I crashed and died. So, um, <laughs> we won't be doing that again. Instead, we've gained a bit more altitude now. I'm going to just sort of fly over instead and we'll do this. So, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty, pretty epic. And lame at the same time. Epic and lame. Can you have those two at the same time? I think you can. I've definitely demonstrated it. That's for sure. Right, here we go. Now we're going to go just over this ridge, so we just get a bit of altitude. Get ourselves over the top here. Drop it in an airspeed, that's to be expected. Control revs. So yeah, like I said, we would have crash if we ever went over something like this. And lo and behold, what are we doing? We are, we did crash. So yeah, that's a lesson to us all. Um, to me, certainly. ourselves nice and low now just, just, just to go down this bit here. So we can go up this bridge here between these two mountains. We can go up there and around, which I imagine is this bit here. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go down and so take our airspeed right off. Not to cut off though. Just off enough and give ourselves some flaps. Get our airspeed down. So we don't absolutely make a complete click of ourselves. When I make a complete click of myself. Okay, flaps back up. My yeah, speed's going pretty steady. That's a lovely engine sound, isn't it? So, so far with this video, I've reset the flight twice. First time, the, air strip, the, air, the aircraft overstressed because uh, there was no warning. Um, and obviously, I was, wasn't paying any attention to the airspeed or the RPM. And the second time was uh, that I decided to try and fly up the top of a massive mountain and stored the aircraft and crashed into the cliff. 
So, all in all, not a good start for the Coyote 2. Do I prefer it to the Big Fox? I don't know. I don't know. I like the steam gauge element to it. I definitely like that. That's cool. It, doesn't, it definitely doesn't feel as manoeuvrable. I'll give it that. That might be because the flight modeling is more accurate, perhaps. But if you look at this though, like me, this is me winging it around. And I'm proper going for it here. Poor throttle, here we go. Okay, what happened there? I collided with an object and caused critical damage to the aircraft. Okay, so welcome back. I'm very sorry, but it would appear that um, I like to crash pretty much all the time in this plane. Um, Glasgow Airport is somewhere over here. Uh, somewhere around here. I'm not entirely sure where he is, but he's somewhere. Um, it looks like that's Glasgow Airport there. So, I'm going to come down to the land, I'm just going to see what it's like to land for the aircraft and then we'll end the video there because I'm getting so bloody frustrated with the fact that I keep crashing into stuff. Clearly need to go a lot to land. Okay, there's, there, there it is. There's, there's one. So let's take our throttle right down. Here we go. Just lower our flaps. are lowered. Going in for a nice gentle landing. Let's just have a look at the aircraft on that side. Yeah, looking nice. Looking good. Okay, so we're going to have to do the tour of Scotland another time, I think. Maybe in the kit box, actually. The kit box seems to be a bit less of a pain in the arse than this one is. I suppose it's because this is more authentic. So I think if you like your your aircraft to be more authentic experience, then this is the one you go for between the two of the Bush Flight ones. Just uh, make sure you uh, are a good pilot, a better pilot than me, I would say. Okay, here we go. So throttle all the way down. Looking for a nice buttery landing here. We've got all red. Approach, so we're good. Coming on down. There we go. Oh! <laughs> so that's what happens when you apply the brakes too hard. You end up going arse over tit. Don't do that, everyone. <laughs> if you can help it. So yeah, all in all, a pretty, uh, yeah, a pretty eventful flight. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now. Bye.